former Georgetown law student. Sandra Fluck to the same level as, let's see, Winston Churchill, uh, Pope John Paul II, Martin Luther King Jr., just a few of the previous world leaders to earn the distinction. And here to tr uh, try and explain how advocating for publicly funded birth control qualifies Fluck for the person of the year. And Clifton Consultant CEO and Democratic strategist Marjorie Clifton is with us and Concerned Women for America's own Penny Nance. Uh, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. Great being here. Marjorie, it's $9 a month at Walmart for birth control if women want to get birth control pills. You can go to online, get all the condoms you want. If you go to a bar in New York City, they're for free. You just take a handful on your way out. Uh, Planned Parenthood gives these things out to women as well, and supposedly to needy win women, and that's in part funded with taxpayer dollars. Do you think she should be woman of the year? Well, the reason that Sandra Fluck represents what maybe woman or person of the year should be about is that she took a national stage, not knowing that she was, by the way, with dignity and grace and talked about a very challenging issue, regardless of what you think of the issue. She was then raked over the coals. She was called a prostitute and a slut. And but she continued to have a national and even global conversation with civility. What and I she think said, that, what if she anything, said, wait a minute, but the foundation of what she said was false. It's not $3,000 well, over the course of a woman's career. And why should taxpayers be paying for her birth control? Why? Well, again, you, you could argue the merits of How about politics, answering the question think, on the merits? But, but I think, but the point is, is what she represents in terms of an issue. And if you have to look at this list, by the way, of the hundred people that were nominated by just the general public, it also includes the Ayatollah of Iran. It includes Ryan Seacrest. It includes Ryan Gosling. I mean, Ryan Seacrest, all I could say is he's a real life Barbie or Ken doll. But beyond that, I don't know what he's done either. So Sandra Fluck, I would say, has Barbie a little more. Or Ken doll. You're going to insult <laughs> Ryan Seacrest? Well, no, I'm just Everybody saying, but like, I think Sandra Fluck, on, absolutely. But what does Sandra wow. Fluck bring to the table not more like so this. than Ryan C. <laughs> well, don't uh, tell right, him let I me, said that. Let me get Penny in here. You know, <laughs> even the idea that she would be considered is a slap in the face to about 60 million evangelical and Catholic women who are offended by the idea that we are forced to pay for someone else's abortion or abortion inducing drugs. The whole, her whole platform was advocating on forcing us to violate our consciences. This issue is not over, Sean. Liberty University's case has been yeah. commanded back down to the Fourth Circuit. Right. We will have our day in court. But the idea that Sandra Fluke is somehow held up as this, this bastion of womanhood. But fundamentally, this, this issue, this is not true. And then also the it's entitlement mindset, why should I... Pay for but, her birth control. And why should the woman who, who basically took the national stage saying she wanted free stuff be the idea of, of the ideal woman? When we've well, got she, these young women that in Pakistan who took a bullet in the head because she advocated that young girls should be able to have an education, women who are fighting mm -hmm. in the Middle East for women's rights, women who are taking strong stands on behalf of real women's issues, and yet we waste our time on Sandra Fluke, who was just, well, just a, a patsy she, she, for the the Obama administration in this, in this campaign. Go ahead. Well, again, you know, you can you can argue the merits of her politics, but what she Why was do doing keep was avoiding representing the merits of it. Well, no, no, but she I'll I'll, I'll, get, I'll deal with it head on. But the issue is she's representing a group of voiceless in the United States in the same way that internationally there are different issues. And for her, what she's talking about are students. And for some women, pregnancy is life or death. And there are not women. And are you who willing have to sacrifice what what Penny is bringing up here, uh, something called religious freedom? Are you willing to force Catholic institutions to go against their own religious teaching uh, well, and fund so, excuse me and fund something that is the antithesis of what their religion is teaching them. Well, as a Catholic woman, I can say that what, what they're representing in terms of policy is actually a separation between church and state I didn't in terms ask of how you that, we deal but that, with the The issue. Catholic position on contraception is well known. They're against artificial well. means. That's mm -hmm. their teaching. You don't have to follow it, but that's their mm -hmm. teaching. Do you want the government to contradict or force or mandate that they go against their religious principles? Well, as a Catholic woman, I don't have to take birth control. That is my choice as a Catholic, in the same way it is for evangelical women. You're still not women. answering so, my question. Did I, did I not say Absolutely, I clearly? am. So, absolutely, I am. And because, oh. in fact, w what this means is that we have an option of whether we choose to take birth control or not. Do you now, want funding the state a federal to force program, institutions to do something that is against their religious beliefs? That's a yes or no question. 
Well, actually, the way that the, the tax money works is not directly going in through You're Catholic not institutions. All right. no. She won't answer. <laughs> the, the answer is, but, yes, it is your choice whether or not to take birth control or whether or not to have an abortion. But you don't want me to have a choice whether or not I have to fund what you want to do. Nor well, do you if you want a religious. violation of um, our conscience to pay for your abortion, send a fluke kids pay for $40,000 a year for, yeah. for law school, but not $9 a month for, for Walmart birth control. Birth well, control. Not, That's ridiculous. Not all women, not ridiculous. All women can afford, we spend $2 billion can afford dollars a year for, plan, for oh, Title I, X funding for birth control. There's no dearth of birth control in this country. Well, actually, That's the cost of true. unplanned pregnancy is far more than that of funding And you're willing to sacrifice religious freedom to achieve this? <laughs> it's the cost is, if you want to get to an economic issue You're willing to force churches to do something against it's their not religious beliefs. the churches. The well, churches the, the, have the it, HHS it, mandate does force them. To do things. Yeah, and your bishops just, don't agree with you either, by the way. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, I know guys, that, but that's a whole other issue. <laughs> oh, you, you want to argue with the bishop? I'll bring him no, on. No, no, I said that we, that's a whole other issue, the bishop. All right, yes. we got to go. Thank you both. <laughs>